Hey guys, it's Tamara. How are you? I hope you're having a great day. I just sent out a text saying that I was going live. So if you did not get that, you can get text notifications by uh, texting the number that I put up in the video description. I'm pulling up my, t uh, my live here on my computer so I can see your comments a little better. Um, so today I am going to be showing you guys how to fix like a hole in the wood or like a bad spot because I mean, you know, sometimes we go to the hardware store and the, um, the wood that we buy may be in poor shape. It may have like a, a knot hole or something like that. And it can, it can make it feel like that part of the wood is unusable, but it's not. So there's a couple of different things you can use to fix holes like this. Um, the first one is with wood filler, which I could not find anywhere around my house. You would think that would be something that Tamara would have laying around, but no, I, and, and Part of it's to blame the fact that our garage is such a mess. I couldn't find it. Hey, Michelle. Hey, Leanne. But what I did find was the second thing that you can use, which is spackle. <laughs> yes, like drywall spackle. This will work just as well as wood filler will. Now, it won't be stainable if you were going to be staining it, but it is paintable. So, hey, Vanessa and Michelle. So, if you were staining something, I would definitely recommend using like actual wood filler. Um, and in a pinch, I don't know if you guys know this, but in a pinch, if you don't have wood, wood filler, you can actually take a little bit of wood glue and, um, like shavings. What am I trying to say? Sawdust. That's what I'm trying to say. Sawdust. And you can mix it with wood glue and make your own filler. But I'm going to take the shortcut and the easy way because this was all I could find. This is drywall. Hey, Diana. So a couple days ago, I was painting this really pretty lantern on Facebook. And as I was dabbing the yellow paint onto the center of the flower, part of the center of the flower just crumbled and came out. And this is actually my fault because this is a scrap piece of wood that I was testing some cuts on my laser with. And so... Um, I, I kind of forgot about that, and when I cut this on the front, part of the wood was already weakened from the laser cutting on the back, and so it caused these little pieces to just fall right out. So I'm going to show you guys how I would fix it and then t uh, touch up the paint, and uh, we may even see what it looks like to uh, touch up the back, because if I was to sell this, I wouldn't want my customer to see all of this on the back where I had like laser, you know, laser carved it and like messed it up. So I could, I can fix that as well. Hey Donna, how are you? How is everybody? So for those of you who are signed up for our fall uh, workshop, it has been going on and last night we took a break, but tonight we're going to be painting the other side, which is the turkey. And several of you guys have already gone ahead and joined our membership, the Painters Clubhouse. And it officially opens on August 23rd. But if you're a, a workshop member, you can sign up anytime and get started. Bunny says, what do you cut? Birch. No, this is quarter inch revolution plywood from Lowe's. That's what I cut this out of. Okay. I was checking out my spackle here because I told you guys I was going to use this. And now that I'm opening it up, I'm looking and it's kind of dry at the top. So I'm going to dig up some fresh spackle from the bottom because this is looking kind of dried out. Maybe I can resurrect it. It, feel, it still feels pliable like putty though. Okay, I'm going to dip just a tiny bit out because it's not going to take much at all to fill this hole. And it's kind of like this. This is actually the kind that's supposed to be pink and then it dries white. Well, it's barely pink anymore. So, I'm just going to put a little bit of this in the hole. Kind of smash it in there to fill all the crevices. Fill it up as much as you can. Try not to get a whole lot of excess on the outside. And then once you've got it on there, get something with a flat edge and kind of scrape. And so see, the little hole right there in the middle has now been filled. It actually kind of even came through to the back a little bit. You can see it. So I'm going to add a little bit on the back as well. Let me scoop some of this out of the bottom. I may even get this a little bit wet to kind of make it more pliable. Let's see if I can make this work. I'm going to see if I can fill in these laser etched holes to to make the back smooth. It may or may not work. I need some new spackle. I need some new uh, wood filler too. And I don't have any wood filler, so I'm going this route and using spackle. All right, instead of my finger, maybe I should try using this little deal here. There we go. And I'm just using, this is like an old tool from the back in the days when I used to sell uppercase living vinyl. And so it was kind of a applicator sort of thing that we could use to 
scrape the vinyl nice and flat. So I'm just using it to fill in these little crevices in the back. Let me do this side also. Have any of you guys tried this before? Hey, Rita. Uh, Katie says it's been so much fun. Thank you for teaching us. I'm glad you're enjoying the workshop, Katie. There we go. That was almost too easy. Let's see if we can put it a little thicker right through here. Get a little bit more. Oh, I still have some. It's just on the, on the thing. I think it needs a little bit of water. <laughs> Tanya says, I make a lot of mistakes and I like using Elmer's natural color wood filler in the tube. I need to try some, well, that may be what I have, but I can't find it. Our um, garage area is quite a mess. And so sometimes I can't find what I'm looking for. So I'm um, using spackle today. Of course, like I said at the beginning, spackle cannot be stained. So if your project has any stain on it, you know, definitely don't use spackle. But if it's painted, this uh, spackle should work just fine. All right, now that we have a nice flat surface, I'm gonna kind of clean up after myself, get a baby wipe out. You can buy a little tool like called a pot scraper. Yeah, that's kind of like what this is. Um, <laughs> Julie says, I can't seem to get real time. Maybe try going out and coming back in. Uh, wonderful Lust Paint Tribe. You're wearing the same shirt as I am today. This is one of Sarah's shirts from her t-shirt club. Sarah from Framed. Okay, let me show you the back. So I have covered my laser engraving with the spackle to fill in the lines. And then we've patched this little hole right here. So now I'm gonna take my baby wipe and kind of clean everything up because I've made a big mess. I've got an extra spackle sprinkled on the front and I don't want that. So I'm just gonna kind of wipe it off because I don't want it on those painted areas because I don't want to have to repaint the red part of the flower. I just want to repaint the, the yellow. And then I've got some along the edge. Clean that up. There's a little bit in that crack right there. There we go. Okay, much better. So now I'm gonna hit it with a hair dryer to speed up the speckle drying. Hey Wanda, Bobby says she's excited for tonight. I am too. We're gonna paint side number two of our double-sided door hanger, which is a turkey. Um, we're just gonna do the background and then the main shape of the turkey tonight. And then tomorrow night we will do the details on the turkey. Kelly says a body shop gave you a bunch of Bondo spreaders. Oh, that's nice. How nice of them. Pampered Chef Scraper would work. Yeah, that would work also. <laughs> Somebody said they needed this information. Good to know. Um, <laughs> Patricia, I love that. She said a lady uh, at Hobby Lobby buying a bunch of paint asked if you ever watched Tamara on Southern Adornments. <laughs> Small world, isn't it? Do you repeat the sides so they don't, they're still dark? What do you mean repeat the sides? Like the edges? Mine still are. There may be one spot that has a little bit, but yeah, you could touch it up with black paint or a Sharpie. Um, hey, Helen. So what I'm doing right now is I had a piece of scrap wood that I painted this magnolia or this um, lantern on a couple of days ago. And it was a piece that I had already laser engraved some on the back. And so if I were to ever sell this piece, I would hate for somebody to receive it and see like all that weird stuff cut on in the back because it was scrap. Not to mention, when I was painting it the other day, the center of this flower started coming apart. And so it was like a bad spot in the wood where I had laser cut on it. And so we are taking spackle, like drywall spackle, and we filled in the center part of this little flower to make it, you know, flat because it was a hole. And now we're going to paint it. Let me make sure it's dry. Nope, it's still kind of malleable. So let me dry it a little bit more. And so I, I filled in the back also. I just used some drywall spackle and I scraped it nice and flat with this little scraper. And then we're gonna paint over it to make it look nice and clean. Now, normally I don't paint the backs of my door hangers. I usually just leave them be. Um, and I've never had a single customer ever complain about it. But because the back of this was like a you know scrap piece of wood that had been laser cut, I want it to look nice. Um, you've been watching me while I'm bed rest. Oh, Lynn, when is the due date? Hey Pam, you're excited about tonight? Me too. So if you did not get a text before I went live just now, you can get text notifications by texting the number that I put in the description. 
Um, also, my membership, the Painters Clubhouse, opens August 23rd, which is what, Monday? That's Monday. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> some, for some reason, I was thinking it was Tuesday or Wednesday, but I got to think about it. It's Monday. So, if you will circle that on your calendar, tell Siri or whoever to remind you, Monday, we're going to be doing lives all, almost all day, <laughs> like two or three times a day, every day, Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And um, my membership's going to be opening up, and then Wednesday will be the last day of my 30 days of Facebook Live, so I'm excited about that. Okay, let's get some of this Magnolia paint. This is the color that I used on the center. I'm just going to get a little round tip brush and just dab it on to kind of touch up the spackle where it was. Looks pretty good. I'm gonna dry that and then we'll add a few little details and then we can paint the back. You could put some bling in there. That might be cute or some glitter. Is that what you meant by bling? <laughs> um, hey, I'm Jane from Louisiana. How are you? Hello, Karen. Hi, Jerry from Texas. Diana says, and voila. Yeah, Mwah. voila. Looks pretty good. It's looking pretty good so far. I'm sure the spackle isn't 100% cured because, you know, it takes some, takes a little while. But we're, we're speeding through this for the purposes of viewer, viewer timeliness. <laughs> um, oh, good, Sharon. I'm glad to hear that. She has a puppy that's been sick, I think it was. Okay, I'm just adding a few little details into the center of our little flower with some black paint so it doesn't look just like a yellow blob. So this is what I did. Just a few little details. I might add a little bit of white too. Hi, Jossie. Hey, Rebecca from Marion, Kentucky. I know where that is. Glitter or a piece of jewelry, that might be pretty. Uh, will it matter if I painted the darker green on my background for tonight instead of jewel green? Um, I'm trying to think. It might make your buffalo plaid look a little bit different, but it, sh it, may, it may be okay. I'm not 100% certain. But the jewel green may show up looking darker because you're painting it on top of the dark green. That's okay, Patricia. You can go back and watch later. Where do you store your paint? So my paint is all inside of this thing right here and I have shelving full of it back there in the background. But I got this thing at Sam's Club a couple of years ago, probably like three years ago. And um, that's where I keep all the paint on my craft desk. <laughs> Thank you, Teresa. Had family issues, missed the work. Yes, Debbie, you can w watch the workshop later. Okay, let's flip this over. And then let's just paint the back black. How about that? Just black. Hi, Jamie. Okay, flat tip brush. Let me see. Here's one. Well, there it is. And I'm just going to squirt this directly on here because I didn't even get out an egg carton. So we're just painting directly over it. It's going to make the back of this look good as new. You'll be able to barely see the outline of what had been carved in it but it won't be as unsightly and ugly as it was before. Just be careful when you're doing this to keep very little paint on your brush when you're brushing toward the edge because if you've got too much, it will flip, you know, it'll kind of like drip over the edge and then get onto the front and you don't want that. So I try to keep just a little bit of paint on my brush at a time. I'm gonna touch up those edges too, where I'd gotten spackle all over the place and it wasn't black anymore. Get a little bit of water on my brush also. Okay, and then this little thing just cleans everything up. So I get asked this question all the time. Do you paint the back of your door hangers? This is probably one of only like two times that I've ever done this, ever. <laughs> I don't like painting the back of the door hangers. It feels like a waste of time because nobody really sees it. 
I do know that like some customers though that have like a glass door uh, or like glass on their door, they don't want to see like the raw wood through the glass from the inside of the house. So I totally understand that. Um, but I've, I've never really painted the back. Where do you get your little dryer? Yes, Amazon. It was actually one of our Fab Five items last Friday, which we're going to be doing another Friday Fab Five tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. Central. So if you're not subscribed to text notifications, be sure and text me so that you can be because we're going to be going live tomorrow at 9.30 and I'm sharing five more things that you guys have submitted to me. So if you have a favorite item, something that you just can't live without, text it to me, text me a link to it, and um, it can be included in a future Fab Five. All right, here we go. The front is all patched up and fine. The back looks good as new. Can, like, you can almost not even tell that we touched that up. So, if you ever have a knot hole in your paint or you have like a mishap with the jigsaw and you accidentally cut into an area that maybe you shouldn't have, you know, wood filler is preferable, but as a good backup, you can use drywall spackle even some that's kind of dried out because this is kind of dried out. Um, but I just re-wet it with a little bit of water and made it work. So, all right. I hope you guys have a great day and I can't wait to see you guys tonight in the workshop. So I'll see you guys for that. And then I'll be live tomorrow morning at 930 with y'all. See you later.